we'll look at those again when we're interviewing drivers because uh, I believe we are ready to go. So we'll take a little run through of the grid. So uh, we've got Richard Towler at the front and then second place, Riley Phillips. That's going to be row number one. Row two is going to be Jay Shepard and Piers Stockton. Uh, then we go back to row number three, which is going to be Julian Thomas, who was on the podium at round one and John Eiley making his UK debut. Likewise, Ed Bridal, he is going to be on row number four with potentially one to watch Chris Hart. Uh, then we've got Ed Worthington and uh, Chris Walton rounding out the uh, top 10. Uh, and then uh, behind that, we've got the Viking car uh, and we've got Stephen Fern there. And then we have Ben Trossel uh, alongside Martin Gibson. Row number eight is David Denyer uh, alongside Chris Rose. And then we've got Captain Speedy uh, and what well, Scrappy. Uh, definitely we'll watch out for him. Uh, and then Evolution Chris is going to be starting from 19th place. And I believe that is your running order. So uh, uh, there we go. That's it. Uh, I believe we are in a bit of a, a break at the moment, but very shortly uh, we will get underway, guys. So uh, I'll get your thoughts ahead of the race. Chris, I'll come to you first. What are you expecting for this one? Uh, as I do, guys, uh, before we hear from Chris and Scott, uh, send in your comments. Uh, let us know what you're thinking, if you're... If what your feedback is of the series of course this is brand new so uh, uh, let us know your feedback on the series who you're cheering on and we'll get comments read out throughout the race but uh, uh chris i'll come to you for a li little bit of a preview to the race first and we'll hear from scott what what are you expecting from this one uh well the based on on the form so far at alton park the open round that we had at uh spa it's going to be richard Taylor and riley phillips i think riley and the two guys on row two Jay Shepard and Pierce Stockton are going to know that they've got to really have a go at Richard going into Richie's corner at turn one at the start of the race. So uh, it, the first corner, I think, could be interesting. We've seen a bit of Larry driving already in the uh, the sharp, the back end of uh, qualifying. So that could be worth a watch, those two, on the second row of the grid. We haven't seen what Pierce can do yet in a UK round, but we know he's quick. So we'll see how he gets on, having qualified pretty well, and Jay Shepard. Uh, looking a, a bit more beefy than he did in his pace than he did at Alton Park. So I think he's going to be up there as well. We'll watch with Chris Hart coming through. Colin Kingsnorth could come through as well from further back down the pack. Third in the championship, the real-life championship in 2019, and a race uh, winner with the Trumans. Yes, the deliveries which we can expect for this year in, in the real Trump Cup in 2020. It's quite an impressive-looking grip because there's some really nice-looking liveries here. If these are real season liveries, I'm looking forward to seeing these in person because there's some really nice cars. There's the there's the familiar-looking cars of, for example, the um, the, v, the the race logic cars of Julian Thomas and, and Daniel and everyone else. So you, we recognise those in many cases. But the I mean, the, I mean, the, the, the wasp livery cars look fantastic. I mean, Chris Hart's new livery, if that's his new livery for, for this year, also looks pretty good. There's some smart-looking Fun Cup cars out here tonight. And we've got Chris Rose there, Chris, as well, back in in 16th place uh, as well in the race because we've got 20 seconds to go now. So, uh, OK, that's it, guys. Strap yourselves in. We are going to be racing very, very shortly now. Uh, cars are gridded up. This is round number two. And on pole position, it is going to be uh, Richard Towler, Riley Phillips alongside. Lights are about to go out. And then we will be away and racing so here we go then. There's Richard Taller and he's going to lead us off down towards turn number one for the first time. Riley Phillips on the inside. We've got Jay Shepard and Pierce Stockton going head to head uh, behind that. Riley Phillips looks to be alongside now as we head in towards turn number one. Richard Taller trying to hang on around the outside. Jay Shepard taking a lot of curb there through turn number one. Oh, and there's a spin. Jay Shepard's off. Richard taller has got off as well. The Viking car spinning round. Riley Phillips is going to lead us going down to the hairpin for the first time. Pierce Stockton uh, has come up to second place we'll grab a replay of that for you now but it's all kicking off uh, once again unfortunately here we go then we can see the replay in the top right hand of the screen as they came out of turn one just a little bit of contact there one went one way one went the other Towler unfortunately off and Jay Shepard off as well so a chaotic start there Chris Absolutely. Um, half expected it, didn't we? Because they knew they had to do something about Richard early on, given how much pace he's got. So this has really put a cat amongst the pigeons. Now to seventh place now for the winner of round one of the driver on pole position. Riley Phillips got through all the carnage to lead. Pierce Stockton went from fourth to second. Jay Shepard has survived. He's just got back up to uh, fourth place. So Ed Bridle, another one to gain. He's third. Shepard fourth. Julian Thomas I think it's fifth now. I think briefly got to third or fourth on that run into the hairpin. And you can see he's right onto the tail now of the Wasp car. So fantastic stuff. Another one to game was Chris Hart into the top six. Yep, Chris Hart there in fourth place. So he's on a, 
Uh, he's doing well at the moment, started in eighth place, didn't he, as we all go on board with Jay Shepard now as they are heading down the straight there. We can see on board with Jay Shepard, Julian Thomas is just ahead of us uh, at the moment. He's dropped down to sixth place, he's got the run, he's going to pull left, and Jay Shepard is going to get up into fifth place. So he's already been off on this opening lap as Jay Shepard, but there he now goes uh, up into uh, fifth place, or does he? I think that was uh, Julian Thomas trying to come back down the outside, backed out of it in the end. Towler is then uh, in seventh place but uh, Riley Phillips it is who leads us uh, he's about to complete lap number one I think uh, Scrappy has been off uh, the Viking car is dropping down uh, as well but uh, let's go back to uh, our two leaders we'll pick up Piers Stockton uh, in second place there we can see Piers Stockton around a second behind Riley Phillips Scott as we complete lap number one yeah very fast the furious start I think the crucial thing for Richard Taylor off the end of the line is we see one car's I think he left the grid incredibly, but um, one thing which was interesting is that after Richard got involved in that first couple of corners, he had to get out of the melee in the midfield as quickly as possible. He's done that, and he's back up to sixth position, which is a good start, but I'm very impressed with both Ed Bridle and Chris Hart for making their way through the, the slight carambolage in the first few corners to be up to third and fourth already. And if they can start to uh, push forward to two, for rather than that they're battling with each other right now as they head into Wilson Hairpiz. He's all Chris Hart gives by a bit of a love tap through the apex of the corner and tries to make his way on the run towards Wilson. But they've made some great progress up the field from where they started in the on back round about sort of row three, row four respectively. But up there in third and fourth now they've got to try and see if they can work together and push forwards. Otherwise the harder these two in fact these three, if Shepard gets involved as well, start to fight each other and also they've got to be careful because oh. it'll mean the top two can start to pull away as well as Taller and Co starting to catch up. Oh, yeah, we just had a move there from Chris Hart down the inside of Ed Bridal. Ed Bridal going uh, on grass ever so briefly as Jay Shepard then trying to come back down the outside and we'll see Jay Shepard trying to make a move there. So Jay Shepard battling away with Ed Bridal. Let's go on board with him then as we can see Chris Hart just up ahead of us has been getting his elbows out on the first couple of laps uh, has uh, Chris Hart in the mirrors. We can see uh, Richard Towler uh, as well. So if we look out of the car now, we can see there's Richard Towler. So the four of them, line astern, the two leaders breaking away. Pierce Stockton just sitting in behind Riley Phillips at the moment, about a Chris, second between them. But yeah, so there we can see Towler is in six there, Chris. Yeah, he's coming back at them as well, isn't he? Absolutely on a charge here. Riley Phillips leads by just over a second. Pierce Stockton in second place. Then the battle that we've seen between Hart, Bridal and Shepard. And then right with them now to the tail of uh, Shepard as he makes his way uh, through Nelson and towards the bomb hole is the pole sitter. And uh, Richard Towler, much, much quicker at this stage than that little group ahead of him. He might have to just sit pretty for the rest of this lap, but he'll have some chances early on in the next lap. We're watching Ed Bridal, who's got back onto the case of Chris Hart as well as they go oh, towards the end of the lap spin. towards Murray's. Oh, it's all going to get a bit tight, isn't it? Yeah, got Chris Hart there just take, taking a, a spin. We'll try and get a replay uh, of that in just a second. But uh, uh, Chris Hart there all got a little bit uh, too chaotic coming out of the uh, uh, final corner. So we'll see if we can grab another look at that. There we can see we just caught the end of it. Chris Hart almost going round. And actually it was going into the side of Ed Bridal that uh, stopped him from going round. So that's put Jay Shepard up into third place. Ed Bridal is fourth, Chris Hart fifth. Uh, and Richard Towler is sixth, and it's very close between the top two now. Pierce Stockton, as we go on board with him, he is right on the case of uh, Riley Phillips here. So, Pierce Stockton hassling re the race leader at the moment, Scott. Yeah, this is the kind of pressure which Riley was uh, applying to Richard Towler and Alton Park, but at the same time, it's the same kind of pressure he had to deal with when he was competing at Spa. So, he's been on both both ends of, uh, of of the pressure meter, shall we say, being the hunter and the hunted, to use that term. But Pierce is keeping him honest at the moment. I think the, what the, going back to the instant back and Murray's, the man who was actually the most luckiest out of that was Richard Towler because he, he was unlucky in losing more time, but he was very lucky not to go into a complete spin and lose even more positions. So he still held that up in sixth position, but he's now 1.7 off the back of Chris Hart. So Chris is the one that seems a bit sort of enthusiastic on this race weekend so far. He's had quite a few spins and going this way and that. That car looking very sideways more than it is in a straight line. But he's keeping in tow with Ed Bridal at the moment. But there's two separate battles that they're pairing off here, which is the scrap for the lead and what was a four-way scrap for third place, which has started to space out a little more. And then everyone else from seventh place downwards in their own private battles further back. Yes, indeed. So yeah, it's... Oh, yeah, sorry, I was going to say there, Chris, the, the gap, isn't it, fluctuating between the top two at the moment? It's gone back up again, but... Uh... 
uh, overall, Piers is doing a good job to keep the pressure on Riley here. Absolutely. Yeah. A few things to note. We, we lost uh, at the start of the second lap down the order Julian Thomas. He dropped uh, towards the tail end. He's got one place back. He just got back ahead of Chris Rose. So Julian Thomas watch for the car in 14th to begin uh, charging back through the uh, field. David Denyer, his race logic teammate, also gained a place up to 11th uh, on the previous lap. We just did a swap for 7th place as well. John Eiley, who uh, dropped back a bit off the start, he's got back to 7th ahead of uh, Chris Walton. Uh, the other thing to note, the, the first report on uh, Ben Trussell uh, in terms of how can he drive pretty well, I reckon. Ben's been a long-term uh, mechanic uh, in the uh, in the Fun Cup, and he went from, as we see there, move there, barging through, Ed Bridle to get through. We see um, we see Ben Trussell went from 16th to 11th on the first lap of the race, but he has sadly dropped back down now to 17th place. But the other um, driver who's normally uh, got the tools in his hands in, in the real life fun cut, Pierce Stockton, is a mechanic going really well in second place. Yeah, Chris Hart just making a move down the inside of Ed Bridle there. So Chris Hart, who's uh, been up and down the order so far in this race, is now back up to fourth once again, and that's bringing Richard Towler back into play uh, in this battle. We can see Jay Shepard has cleared off from these guys now. He's been able to get a gap, but let's check in with the top two because there's only half a second between them, Scott, as we can see Pierce Stockton once again closing back in on Riley Phillips. Yeah, it seems to be more a case of that Stockton's the one that seems to be causing that gap to fluctuate more than Riley's in many cases. Riley seems pretty consistent, as I say that, they're both run a little wide on the exit of Hamilton's. But it seems, though, that Stockton's more under pressure to keep in check with Phillips rather than Phillips is to try and get away from Stockton. Meanwhile, with these three still scrapping on, I think Richard Taylor's trying not to get stung again as he's dived up the inside of the pair of them next to the Oggy's corner. Bridal and Hart were so fast to battling with each other that Salas was slotted back in and go, you're going to try and take me out at Murray's, have that one for size. They were the leaders, Pierce Doctor, with a little bit of bump drafting here on the back of Riley Phillips, down towards Brundle and Nelson, looking pretty strong so far. So Riley now started for a little bit of pressure, but so far it seems he's keeping coping pretty well. So Riley has this race under control, but it is Pierce Doctor, I think, that is under, under more pressure to keep up with him and not make mistakes to fall further back. Is this um, something you see often in Funk Cup, Chris, the drivers uh, pushing each other along? Uh, yeah, absolutely. Working together, I guess, if, if they can, to try and pull away from the pack behind, because they know there's a quick driver in third as well, Jay Shepard. And uh, it was the, uh, the race logic car, David Denier, going side by side here with the Viking car of Mark Home to uh, cement his place in the top ten. Watching Chris Hart now, who's up and down the order like he was at Alton Park. And there's the move to, uh, at the uh, at the end of the lap, to gain that fourth place. Richard Towler through. Then he runs wide. Then Chris Hart gets past the pair of them. So it's uh, ended up with Hart ahead of Towler, both of them ahead of Ed Bridal in the maroon car. But Bridal's coming back at them. Yeah, Bridal, we can see, trying to go around the outside here uh, of Richard Towler now as they come down towards the hairpins. Still side by side here uh, are Bridal and uh, Towler. You can see Towler on the inside. Is he going to be able to get this move completed? Yes, he is. And that is Richard Towler up into uh, fifth place. So Chris Hart is now past and he's trying to chase down Jay Shepard. Jay Shepard, three seconds up the road. Jay Shepard could really do with the top two having a battle at some point. It is a long race. We've still got around 50 minutes uh, remaining in this one. Let's check in in 10th place, actually. I think there's a good battle going on uh, towards this end. We can see the Viking car there in 11th. But just behind this, Julian Thomas, uh, who is on the recovery, as you uh, mentioned earlier, Chris, he is now up into 12th place. Yes, he's uh, just got ahead of uh, Dave Clark. So uh, Julian, Julian in the uh, blue and white race logic car, the number one car. His teammate David Denier carries the number 252 uh, for this race. He's pulling away from Clark. He's got a bit of a clear track now before he gets up to anybody else. So he lost an awful lot of time with an incident on that uh, second lap. He's going to have, we'll see what his real speed is now in this next couple of laps. But his next target is going to be the battle for 10th place between his teammate David Denier. And sandwiched in between the two teammates in 11th place is Mark Home in the Viking car. Yes, there we can see David Denyer then with the Viking car uh, just behind. And uh, I think you're right, Scott. Let's go back to the leaders, uh, shall we? So we can see uh, Riley Phillips uh, leading from Pierce Stockton. I think you, know, you might be right in saying just a, a mistake sometimes from Stockton is seeing him drop back. But once again, he's with them. And uh, as we saw in the last lap, he is deciding to push Riley Phillips uh, along uh, at this stage uh, of the race and try and build that gap uh, over Jay Shepard. But uh, overall, I'd say the race has, has now settled down. 
Yeah, I'd, I'd say so that. I mean, what's interesting is that Jay Shepard is in a little bit of what I call no man's land. He's not really being challenged by the cars behind, even though Chris Hart is now into uh, fourth position. But he's not. you have to wait and see just how much of, um, pace he's able to get. I see that Bukrin Pierce Stocks have just put in a new fastest lap of the race. that's just been beaten by a tenth by Jay Shepard. So he's actually motoring on pretty well. And he was about a second quicker than Chris Hart. So it looks as though that he's sort of trying to at least match, if not slightly better, the pace of the leaders. But also he's still pulling away from the cars behind, battling in fourth, fifth, sixth and seventh. I think one driver's foot a little bit hard done by, I think, in many cases, possibly Richard Towler, because he's been trying to make some moves up and down the order. But um, usually, whenever he's tried to make any progress at the field, he's usually found the, the grey and blue car of, um, of uh, Chris Hart. He's been quite erratic at times with his racing, but I think now he's had a few laps to calm himself down. He's starting to put in some decent lap times to keep it on the road. Yeah, there we can see on, on board with uh, Pierce Stockton now. Chris is... Uh... Just behind Riley Phillips. So uh, a good battle, I'm sure, between these two ahead. Yeah, it's a good lap. This from Pierce Stockton in second place. He's got a gap down to just over three tenths of a second now and started to p apply some pressure to Riley Phillips. Riley was doing all the chasing in round one. This was pretty much the view he had of uh, the race winner, Richard Towler. But now he's uh, the shoe's on the other foot. He's having to defend his lead, taking some curd there. As they both go through, the gap comes down a bit more as they make their way towards the Bentley Strait. And on that long, one kilometre long Bentley Strait, this is where the slipstream will really come into play. A bit wide onto the straight was uh, the race leader. So Pierce Stockton's going to have a real opportunity now to pull out of the slipstream and dive down the inside to get the lead of the race into Brundle. Yeah, Pierce Stockton choosing to stay behind for the time being. But it's close for fifth. Let's look at Richard Towler. He's now side by side uh, with Chris Hart. So this is round one winner Richard Towler going into fourth place. So there he goes through into fourth. So Richard Towler now next on his list is going to be Jay Shepard. He's got just over 45 minutes to try and work his way uh, back up the order. 4.3 seconds is the gap. It's going to be interesting now, Chris, to see what Chris Hart does. Does he work with Richard Towler now? Uh, or does he try and fight and take that place back? As any one way Chris drives, and that's to go forwards at the <laughs> split second. He's gonna he's gonna have a go if he can to get through as they go through Corum Curve, nose to tail on the way into Murray's at the end of the lap, kicking up the dust through the turn onto the straights, slightly uphill the straight, the centre straight as well. So you've got to get a good exit here on the way towards Riches, but Towler got the better run onto the straight and he's just started to stretch back away the pair of them pulling away now from uh, ed bridal in sixth place in the maroon car so a uh, great scrap here and still a nose to tell for the lead of the race with just two tenths of a second between them now yeah very close isn't it between uh, uh Piers and riley uh, part of me thinks it's uh it's just playing with our minds here because uh, every time it looks like Pierce Stockton is going to go for a move, he doesn't. So uh, uh, we'll check in elsewhere for the uh, time being. And let's go down to 11th place. Here's the Viking car trying to uh, dive down the inside uh, of uh, David Denya. Who, do, who did we say was in the Viking car again? We, we got a confirmation. Mark, that. Mark Home. Mark yeah. Home. I've got to stop saying Viking car. I, I, I'm just and used to saying that. I'm just used to hearing you say that, Chris, um, to be honest. Uh, when it's, I, when it's, I was drunk up. Blame me. <laughs> <laughs> it's not in its usual. It's not in its usual livery that car. Either. I know, it's not, no I, problem. It's, it's, it's yellow and black normally, rather yes. than black and white. But uh, so it isn't really yeah. a Viking car, is it? It's it's just the, the, no, the automated stealth livery. mode today. Yeah. Right, so so Mark Home uh, is uh, just going to try and have a move on David Denyer. Let's go on board uh, with Mark Home as he tries to dive down the inside here of Denyer, going on the grass a little bit. Uh, but it looks like he may just get that move done. The red arrow to the right of our screen now moving to the back suggests that he is through. So Mark Home up into 10th place behind that self. Oh, Julian Thomas has tagged David Denyer. The two teammates tagging each other there. We'll have to get a replay up of uh, that one. Oh, dear, Julian Thomas. I don't know how quite how that happened. Let's uh, uh, have a look then uh, as we uh, see uh, what happened here. So here they're coming down the straight. And it looked like, uh, I think, was that Denya moving back across? Yes, and uh, tagged the front of uh, Thomas. Racing instant, in my opinion. But uh, as we go back to uh, live pictures, it still looks like the pair of them are nose to tail. So uh, Julian Thomas now in 11th and David Denya in 12th. And uh, Scrappy, our friend Scrappy from qualifying, right there in 13th <laughs> as well. Yeah, that's 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 been in the Cardinals. action today, hasn't he? <laughs> yeah, that, that, that's the Cardinal sin, isn't it, of motorsport? You never take your teammates Oh, no, out, there's been another the... crash. Sorry there, Scott, another crash. And Scrappy, our friend, has unfortunately gone right oh. to the back of David Denyer. Oh, dear. 
we'll get a replay up of uh, of that one. Sorry, my brother who's trying to do the uh, replays is uh, is just <laughs> is just laughing too much at the moment. Um, right here, here we go. Let's have a look what happened. It was an, it was a, a solid attempt at a move, but it just ended like that. And he finished the job well, didn't he, by plodding straight into the side of uh, Denya. So uh, that's going to see Denya down into uh, 15th place. Uh, but, uh, uh, well, all go all kicking off outside of the top 10. So let's go back and check in what's going on at the very front uh, of the uh, field. And there we can see the two leaders uh, still right together again, uh, looking like they're going to pass each other. Uh, but uh, not sure, sure that's quite going to happen. So let's go back to... Uh, a fifth and sixth, shall we, and see what's happening back there. This is Ed Bridal Scott trying to chase down Chris Hart. Yeah, these two haven't really made much more progress from their starts of being able to get through the chaos of the first half lap or so. I see you can see on board with Ed Bridal here, and they're not really sort of working too much together. <laughs> you were shouting whether or not Richard Taylor and Chris Hart were going to work together. I think after the fact that Chris Hart almost took out uh, ended up almost inadvertently ended up taking out Richard Taylor at least twice. I'm not quite sure which he wants to work with him, so he's tried to escape up the road as much as possible to try and chase after Jay Shepard, see if he can work work way with him. Um, so we're watching Edge just working away at the wheel here to keep in tabs with Chris Hart. One thing I've noticed with uh, Riley Phillips and Pierce Stockton is that uh, Pierce is more interested in trying to build a gap to the cars behind to almost work together a little bit more now compared to trying to pass immediately because I think he knows that if those two keep on battling with each other, all that's going to do is just invite Jay Shepard to keep on eating time out of that advantage they've got and they're going to try and make hay while the sun sort of shines in these overcast conditions in the uh, Steston race here. But also he's got to be careful anyway because in clear air, both Jay Shepard and Richard Towler do appear to be lapping that little bit quicker. The gap is just under three, four seconds for Jay Shepard behind second place and a further three and a half seconds back to Richard Tower. So on pacing clear air, those two, you look pretty quick. Oh, so dear. on the straights at least, the top got to try and Sorry, work as well as they can. I think Ed Bridal just, has just disappeared. Um, he, he just, <laughs> he's gone. Uh, what happened to him? Um, he just... He, uh, Exit stage left. <laughs> quite literally on our screen. I think he's uh, I think he's had a disconnect, uh, sadly. Um uh, so uh, yeah. whilst, whilst that was happening, just quickly, sorry to cut in there. No, I just no know Richard Tallis was putting a two fifteen point zero zero five, which is a very quick lap time. So he is really charging along to try and get himself back with the leaders. He can do it. He's only still got forty minutes of the race to go, but he's going to have to keep on pushing as hard as he is. And he's doing an excellent job to try and keep up with Jay Shepard here. The pair of them, as I said, they are starting to eat into that advantage that the top two have at the moment. The gap is under three and a half seconds respectively to each other. So this is going to be quite interesting as we go into the second half of the race in a few minutes' time. Uh, yes, as we'll uh, have to keep an eye on that one. But, uh, oh, that's, uh, that's a real shame for, uh, for Ed Bridal. Uh, to get a to get a disconnect there, Chris. He, he he was going along pretty well for his for his first race in the series. He was going well. We know he's a, a very quick driver in uh, in the real uh, fun cap. Three really strong seasons in fun cup karting background, mm. and he was just at the point where he started to close in on Chris Hart for that fifth place. He really seemed to have got into a groove. It was odd that the disconnect came just at the point where they, the pit lane entry was as well. Seemed to <laughs> seem to go off down the pit lane, but it's uh, he has completely disappeared sadly. So that puts um, Chris Walton up into the top six now, albeit he's a long way down on Chris Hart. Uh, John Eiley seventh, the uh, former Ferrari and McLaren era dynamicists in Formula One, uh, is seventh. Eighth place Fred Worthington, ninth place for Mark Home. Uh, Julian Thomas into the top 10 now, but three and a half seconds or so adrift of uh, the Mark Home car. Then it's scrappy Dave Clark 11th, uh, Stephen Fern 12th, Martin Gibson, who uh, races in Fun Cup as well, has done for many years actually, races with the GT Radial team. GT Radial, he sponsored the Fun Cup. He's also raced in the British Truck Racing Championship last year. He's 13th. David Denny down to 14th now. Uh, ben Trossel 15th, uh, who is one of the mechanics for Chris Hart, but he's ahead of two real life race winners, Chris Rose. And uh, Chris Weatherall, both behind Ben Trossel. So I know Ben's got quite a lot of support today. And in his first UK race, but his second race uh, in, involved in the uh, Funk Up uh, virtual series because he was in the open uh, event at Spa. He's there in 15th place now, Rose 16th and Weatherall 17th. We've had a bit of a change up front, haven't we? The gap has just risen to 1.9 mm. seconds between 
uh, Riley Phillips and Pierce Stockton. Jay Shepard, uh, who we are on board with now through the hairpin. Uh, that has, of course, brought him closer with Pierce Stockton dropping away uh, from Riley Phillips, uh, Scott. So uh, the top three, now, it's, it's a lot closer between them, isn't it? Once one driver uh, in a battle like this drops back, uh, it kind of bunches them all up a little bit. So uh, there's a, a, every chance now that either Pierce Stockton is, is going to catch Riley or that he's going to get, get caught by Jay Shepard. Yeah, and it goes back to what I was saying before, is that Pierce seems to be the one that seems to be more under pressure to keep up with Riley Phillips' pace than it was for Riley Phillips to try and defend for it, because he's been in that position before, having led at Spa, and he was also in the fight at Alton Park as well, so it's not as if he's not used to it, whereas Pierce maybe was being a little bit too, uh, pushing a bit too much, and therefore making too many mistakes, whereas now that's all, all that's done is it's now invited both Jay Shepard and Richard Tell to make some progress as they come up through Oggy's Corner and out through Williams' onto the Bentley straight once again. And, and look at the uh, ultimate pace. I think it was only going to be a matter of time if, if they kept it up, that both Jay and Richie were going to catch up. As, as I say that, I just watched Jay Shepard run wide on the exit of Williams. But these two really are going to be pushing on. And it's the dynamic we're going to have to watch for is in the second half of the race here, when we see both Jay and Richie start to push forwards, taking a few more tenths out of the top two in the bid for Belize. So while Riley's led, led the race pretty much at the moment from, from the start, don't count out at least the guys in third and fourth. And still, Pierce Doctor can bring it back as well just yet because any one of these four at the moment seem to be in the plum seats to potentially get themselves a race victory, if not at least a slot on the podium. Yeah, great little battle going up there between the uh, between the top four. Uh, Chris, uh, how reflective is this of a of a normal fun cut race, would you say, what we're seeing in, in, in terms of the order and the racing and so on? Uh, very much so the way the battle the battle sort of ebb and flow and because you've got a longer race i mean this is only a, a one hour race they normally have you know at least at least three hour races normally four or five hour races then you always have these these periods where you can see the battles developing the gap starting to close and there's you know another pocket of action maybe a little bit further back as well uh, one thing you can guarantee is that it'll all all come towards a grandstand finish because the amount of times we get races that finish within a couple of tenths of a second of each of those is unreal uh, and uh, and look how close it is it now between that top four it's getting closer and closer between Phillips, Stockton, Shepherd and Towler. Shepherd sort of following on what he did at Alton Park really he's got into the groove quicker than he did in in round one here but in the second half of the race at Alton Park he was pretty relentless in terms of his pace so I think he could be a real threat here for the the race victory and he's Got the gap down to 1.4 seconds now. Uh, the the uh, ideas of what might have happened to Ed Bridler are ranging between connection dropout to possibly uh, he's changing. He's gone for a pit stop to change with his brother. Uh, and Mike Casport has said maybe he's forgot. He's gone to put 50p in the meter. Well, Mike, Mike, you're really showing your age now. If you if you remember <laughs> people putting 50 pences in meters under the cupboard in the electric box, <laughs> older than me. <laughs> Oh dear, well, whilst, whilst we were hearing that, uh, of course, we did see, see Julian Thomas have a bit of an off there, unfortunately, whilst he was making a, a move on uh, Mark Holm as well. So, uh, uh, unfortunately, that, that move not so successful, um, but uh, we have had a change for 11th uh, as well. Uh, so, I think that's Chris Weatherall who's gone up into uh, 11th place. Uh, I think. Oh, no. Well, maybe not. But uh, there's, there's a change for 11th. Let's just say that. Uh, uh, John Eiley, we're looking Stephen at... Stephen Fern, isn't it? Yeah. Ah, yeah, that's the one. Stephen Fern. Uh, Chris Weatherall's down in 17th, isn't he? So uh, Stephen Fern up to 11th uh, ahead of the scrappy car. And uh, yeah, let's have a look at that now. We can see Julian Thomas uh, did has already had one attempt at this move on uh, Mark Holm. Let's see if he can make it work second time lucky he's coming up to a pretty good space uh, to do it as they come around this right hander we're on to uh, uh, the back straight let's see if julian thomas can get this move done we're on board with him uh, at the moment so uh, in the slipstream we go let's see if uh, uh, we're going to get any defensive driving from mark home no we're not so he's left the door open and now julian thomas is alongside and that should be move complete we can see the red arrow to the right of picture there that will show us uh, where uh, Mark Holmes going to be and uh, he pretty much lets that one uh, go for Julian Thomas so damage limitation I think uh, for him but Nets now go uh, to the battle for second third uh, and fourth Scott because it is getting very close now between Pierce Stockton, Jay Shepard and Richard Towler. Really is. I just saw the lap times coming through, and the fastest out of those three was Richard Towler. He's into the two fourteens now, so he's closing in not only on Jay Shepard, but collectively the pair of them have been closing in lap after lap on Stockton. And actually, as a result of that, now also looking at the times, 
Stockton's now starting to close a little bit now back in on Riley Phillips. So it seems as though the top four are starting to sort of compress back together again as we he head to the halfway distance in this race. And we're coming into the complex now. And Phillips now, his lead, which was about, what, to 1.8, almost two seconds, is now starting to come back down again. But this time, what's crucial is, is that he's starting to bring Shepard and Towler with him. But what Pistock will be hoping for right now in the next few moments is he wants Shepard and Towler to start fighting with each other for third place because it'll mean he gets a clean break to start to continue chasing back onto the tail of Phillips. So we'll wait and see how this battle plays out. As I see, Towler is trying to make it through and have a look. But I think Chef has got to realise and almost say to Tala inadvertently, don't fight me, come with me, let's work together, catch um, um, Piers. By the time he starts to catch up to Riley, we can start to work together again. Although, seeing go side by side, I'm not quite sure he's got the message yet. Yeah, here we go, we're side by side then. Let's have a look, Richard Tala trying to get this move done into the left hander. We go, Jay Shepard's going to try and hang on around the outside, but in the end, that is move complete. So round one winner, Richard Tala has got into third, or has he? He's coming out of the right hander there. Jay Shepard looks like he might be to get this move back again let's have a look and yes he has so uh jay shepherd is indeed back ahead so uh, uh that is the first round complete in what could be a lengthy battle between uh, these two now as they make their way towards the last corner shepherd going slightly defensive here Tyler's going to try and get a move down down the inside but can't quite do it chris so uh, uh battle has commenced here this is all going to be good news for pierce stockton and really really good news for the race leader riley phillips because if Shepard and Towler start fighting, and if they catch then Stockton and the three of them go at each other, they do that for a couple of laps, uh, three laps, then Riley Phillips is so consistent, he's going to be up the road and uh, he's going to have the race victory, potentially in the bag here. Richard Towler having another go at the inside of the way to Richie's corner. Half a lap these two have been running together. Shepard still won't give it up. Willie on the way out of uh, Richie's corner, and that's the second time he's fought back now. He did it at Brundley, he did it at Nelson through that complex. He does it again at Richie's. I guess his nose back in front by the time they get back down to the hairpin. But the more they fight each other, the slower they'll be and the bigger the gap will be to second place man Pierce Stockton. Yeah, so uh, Jay Shepard holding on at the moment. And uh, the gap now, as you can see, uh, Pierce Stockton has uh, risen that gap to uh, 1.6 seconds, 2.6 now to the leader as well. So as Chris said, definitely uh, good news that for uh, Riley Phillips. Richard Towler closing in, under braking there, just getting the rear end a little bit loose on the exits. How you got to drive these uh, Fun Cup cars sometimes. Uh, Chris, a lot of people say they're just, just like big go-karts, aren't they, Fun Cup cars? And, and you've driven them as well, haven't you? Yeah, I've driven not for a while, but driven uh, driven a few times. Yeah, and they, yeah, they are they're very responsive. You can you can throw them around, and they don't they're not unpredictable. They don't slide around uh, too much. They don't snap away from you. Uh, they're very physical. Uh, inside the cockpit of one of these, it's uh, it, it's brutal, really. The the noise that you get uh, and the heat inside the car rattling around, uh, and you and you've got to throw it around. But they, they handle really well and um, fantastic to race because they're so close and because you can overtake. You know, there's no such thing as dirty air in front cup. When you're behind somebody, you get a toe. It's old fashioned, and you get sucked into their slipstream, and you're able to find a way past. So we've seen some great examples of that already, and I'm sure we're going to see some more as we go towards the uh, second half of the race now. Particularly this battle between Shepard and Towler, who are both on the ragged edge, aren't they? Yeah, we have heard from Chris Bridle, by the way. A real shame that he did disconnect from the server. So sorry to hear that, mate. Really, uh, really sorry to hear that. It was a real shame, wasn't it? Having a really good race there, Chris. So uh, uh, Chris and Ed, uh, it was Ed, wasn't it? But uh, yeah, uh, unfortunately disconnected from the server. So hopefully we see them back next time. But uh, on board with Richard Towler, uh, we go once again. Richard looking to the outside of uh, Jay Shepard here. They're going to be side by side uh, going in towards turn number one. Richard may even grab a little bit of a toe off. Piers Stockton that might help him get more alongside but Jay Shepard just holding on uh, for the time being as they go through turn number one now down towards the hairpin Towler's going to find a space on the inside is he going to be able to get the move complete yes he is Jay Shepard leaves the room I think Jay Shepard locking up a little bit on the brakes as well there ran wide so uh, that is Towler up into third place Chris yeah, good stuff, that. They gave each other just enough room, didn't they? Although Jay Shepard still trying to have a nibble back at the inside on the way out of the next turn. But for now, it's been hard work, this. It's taken two laps, but Richard Towler has got himself back up into third place, having slipped back to sixth or seventh, wasn't he, on the first lap after the uh, slight carnage that we had coming out of Richard's corner, uh, which was, you know, between these two drivers, which really triggered it all off, Towler and Shepard. Now... They're starting to reel back in Pierce Stockton as well. He was a bit ragged, wasn't he, through the uh, previous turn. And here we go. There could be this change for second now. 
Yep, Towler's gone down the inside. He's made that change for second place. So good stuff there uh, from Richard Towler. So uh, two moves uh, in a, as well in one lap there, in a half a lap even. So uh, Richard now up into second. But uh, these three really have to work together. Oh, Jay just uh, going off on the, the grass a little bit there. We go on board with him now in fourth place. Uh, the only way that Richard Towler is going to be able to close in on Riley Phillips here. Uh, is if these guys work together, either that or he's got to get a gap and then try and chase down uh, Riley Phillips. But uh, Pierce Stockton there, I uh, don't know if that was just a different line being taken there, but uh, almost looked tempted to make a move uh, down the inside of uh, Richard Towler and Jay Shepard, a bit of a mistake, uh, and he's now going to drop away. But uh, Scott, really, uh, Richard Towler could do with building a gap here over Pierce and, and Jay as quickly as possible. He could, yeah. I mean, it, it, it seems as though that the plan that I thought could have been in contention for Richard and Jay to start to work together, either fell on deaf ears. It just wasn't going to happen because Richard was so keen on getting past Jay as quickly as possible because I think his only focus was to get, get him, you know, for him to, if it's be me and myself and I getting up towards the front of the field, whereas rather than working together, it wasn't quite on the cards. There's a bit of a scrap I can see on the screen here going on between David Denyer and Ben Trussell there. And that was, uh, I think, uh, Trussell just uh, losing a sp oh, uh, that, that, that was scrappy going past Ben Trussell as I was looking at that. Leaders, though, are ready into Richie's corner. And it does seem as though that uh, Jay's not really able to keep the pace with uh, Rich Towler, who has got past Stockton. And now the key thing's going to be to watch out for, guys, is I'm sure as we're watching that lead gap, because it's three and a half seconds at the moment. The question is, if Towler is quicker than Phillips, how quickly can he get that lead gap down in 27 and a half minutes? It's three and a half at the moment. Let's see how many, how, how, how much you can close it down by and how quickly you can do that at the same time. Well, we'll pick that up in just a second. We're on board with John Eiley at the moment coming through turn number one. Chris Walton just ahead of us. Chris Walton definitely feeling the pressure locked up coming in to the final corner, corner almost ran a little bit wide. So this is a chance for John Eiley to uh, try and take sixth place. Not quite able to close in towards the uh, hairpin there, but Judging off what we saw at round number one, Chris, would you would you think uh, that is enough time? 20, 27 minutes now for uh, Towler to close down at a three-second gap to Riley Phillips. Yeah, I think so. It's um, it's going to be tight, and he's going to have to rely on clean laps all the way through. But uh, yeah, he should have time to to catch the gap. Riley Phillips, we know he's unlikely to make a mistake. He's, he's metronomic normally in his uh, consistency. So it's down to Richard really to put that pressure onto him, to force him into a mistake, and to make no mistakes himself. Uh, as we uh, see this top, top, this battle for sixth place running nose to tail as they went through uh, Agostini there. This this battle has been going on for lap after lap. It's the closest it's been. They're all over the grass. They're going through uh, Hamilton now. And John Eiley is uh, really putting the pressure on Chris Walton, who was forced onto the grass there, wasn't he? As he went on the way uh, through Hamilton and towards Oggies, uh, through Williams, they'll go onto the Bentley straight now, and they'll still be absolutely together. And we see Julian Thomas is uh, into eighth place now, ahead of Ed Worthington. And on the graphic, we saw that Ben Trussell got back ahead of Scrappy, back ahead of Dave Clark. So Ben going really well now in 14th place. Yeah, Ben Trussell doing well down there in 14th place, but uh, Eiley there in 6th, Walton in 7th, so that, of course, a change. We saw, oh, Chris Walton getting a little bit sideways there. Good save uh, in the end from Chris Walton. That's going to lose him a lot of time uh, to John Eiley. We can see the gap now going up, but let's go to Richard Towler because uh, look at this gap, Scott. It is coming down very, very quickly. Uh, I'm being told it's probably about 8 tenths a lap now he's taken out of Riley Phillips. Yeah, well, he's, he seems to be lapping in his fastest like You can see on the screen there is a 214.948. And that in itself is seven tenths quicker than the best lap that Riley Phillips has managed. So even though he's in back as far as, what, sixth or seventh place, he looks as though he's got the ultimate pace to close down on Riley and pretty quickly. I said, you know, how quickly can he close in and how many laps is it going to take? I mean, already in, what, a lap and a half, he's taken that seven tenths of a second and it's visibly coming down, I think, corner by corner by about a few tenths per half lap or so. So Richard is certainly the man on form at the moment. The question also could be is that how is the battle for third going to play out? Because Jay Shepard might have some pace to catch up to Piers Stockton. But again, Piers seems to have settled down now and found a rhythm after being right on the rear wing of Riley in the first point of this first half of the race. And then towards the end of it, as he runs a little wide exiting Hamilton's corner, he sort of dropped off and fell into the clutches of both Towler and Shepard. So Towler now chasing off after him. And again, just whilst we've been talking, he's taken... What, another half second out of Riley Phillips. So Towler, undoubtedly fastest man in the field. He's not a multiple-time IRAC NASCAR champion for nothing. Yeah, more comments coming in. Uh, we're just uh, hearing there from uh, uh, well, from Andrew Phillips, who's uh, 
moderating the chat for us, uh, saying he thinks Richard has plenty of time to close this uh, gap down. We'll be uh, we'll be uh, with him in about 12 minutes or so. So uh, keep your comments coming in, guys. We'll get them read out throughout the race. Uh, do like, follow, and subscribe the Phillips Motorsport channel uh, as well. We're going to, of course, be streaming all the UK races on here uh, and the new Open Series as well. We did the first sort of test race from Spa. That was one of the most chaotic races I've ever commentated on, so I'm expecting it to be just as good going forwards. And that is open for anyone, even bigger grid on that as well. But on board with Chris Walton, was going to look to the inside. John Eiley covered, so Walton now... Now looking to the outside, so this is battle resumed uh, between these two. Is Walton? Oh, almost a bit of contact there. Walton cutting across the front of Eiley. Now is going to go over the grass and just about recovers it. So Chris Walton in the end read the predictions of Eiley, who went for the switchback. Walton covered it off, but has done too good of a job of that almost has slowed his car down. And Eiley is now back into sixth place. Let's go to fourth place though, because it's about to kick off between Pierce Stockton and Jay Shepard. We go on board with Jay Shepard now through the hairpin. Is he going to be able to get the run on Pierce Stockton? Not quite yet, but uh, Pierce Stockton must have made a mistake somewhere. It's fallen away from Towler, who's uh, at the same time been closing that gap down to Riley Phillips. So it's going to be two battles within the top four here, Chris. One for the lead and then one for third place. Yeah, I think you're right, Pierce. Must have had a moment somewhere because I was keeping an eye on the gap and it was staying at around about a second and a half and Shepard through some sectors caught him through others he dropped back but a bit ragged now it is for uh, Pierce Stockton because he knows that Shepard is all over him and uh, going through Agostini certainly uh, that gap came down a bit they go through Hamilton at pretty much the same uh, distance but uh, it might be a chance for a lunge at the end of the Bentley straight on the way into Brundle the left-hander or maybe Nelson just after it the right-hander because Jay Shepard has got a bit between his teeth here and he also knows Chris that if he gets delayed behind Pierce Dotson too long he can kiss any chances of catching the top two goodbye he needs to get past him now yeah that's a very good point and uh, I think one thing that might help either of these guys to get back involved particularly Jay for that battle for the lead is if Richard Towler is going to close in at the rate he's going at he'll be with Riley Phillips in a few laps and if Riley Phillips decides to defend then there could be a, a battle all the way to the flag and that might just give the likes of Stockton and Shepard a, a chance to close back down we do as you can see at the very top of screen have just over 20 minutes uh, remaining last time I looked at the gap between Phillips and Towler it was about 2.8 seconds it's now less than two seconds but we're going to keep uh, on but we're going to stay with the battle that is going on at the moment that is between Stockton and Jay Shepard let's see if Jay Shepard can get anything done down the start finish straight then here we go on board with Jay Shepard I know Jay, uh, Dan Nightingale is tuning in in the comments he's cheering for Jay is Jay about to treat us to a move he's going to look to the outside now going down towards turn number one he's going to be fully side by side with Pierce Stockton is he going to be able to get a move done all the way around the outside Jay's certainly going to give this one a go just about stays on the track and Piers in the end holds on but that is not going to be it over just yet because now we go down to the hairpin Piers not taking any chances whatsoever dives in to the hairpin nice and early Jay looking to take a wider line and Piers Stockton comes away with a bit of a gap Scott yeah pretty intense battle between the pair of them on that side it looks like Jay was he did all the right things applying the pressure but when it came to trying to make the move just a little too hot round the outside into Richie's corner and that's just given Piers a little bit more breathing space for about seven tenths now but Jay will be back if he can build that momentum back up and get onto the tail of Stockton's car again that move will come with him an excellent short lap or two if he's able to get back in through the next bit although the gap has gone back out to a second again so it's sort of fluctuating here and there Meanwhile, the lead gap, as you said, it, it has come down to what to 1.7 now. So I think Phillips is trying to respond as much as he can, but ultimately Richard seems to have the, the best pace. We're up towards two thirds distance in this race now, coming with 20 minutes to go. So there is still a chance where Phillips. The, the, the thing is that Richard he can start to close in as much as he can, but the question is is that how is he going to deal with Riley by the time they get to it? This is pretty much how it was in the previous race at Alton Park, but it was positions the other way around. It was. Towler that was doing that was leading it was Phillips doing all the chasing whereas this time it'll be the other way around whereas Towler's got to be the one to try and find a way past oh, Riley so sorry, that's sorry, quite Scott. a fascinating battle we had almost a spin there for Chris Walton what a save that was actually mm. in the end we'll try and get a replay up of that for you now so uh, let's see if we can have another look it was uh, just behind John Eiley there and uh, 
Let's see if we get another look at it. There you can see we went on board just at the right time and uh, a good save in the end uh, from Chris Walton. But uh, Chris, I, th I think you mentioned this earlier. Usually in Fun Cup races, as you said, by the end, there's always a, a close battle. Well, we're coming up to the final 15 minutes. And as we go on board with Richard Towler, that is the view between himself and race leader Riley Phillips. Yep, yeah, you're right. It's uh, likely going to be two uh, scraps as well, because I reckon at some point Jay Shepard will come back to try and get this final place on the podium, what will be his first podium, uh, for uh, uh, Pierce Stockton to try and hold on to that position. It'll be his first podium as well. So we're going to get looking like the first double winner, but will it be Riley Phillips or Richard Taylor? They both won a race apiece, one in the UK series, one in the Open series. The gap's coming down, but not by as much as it was earlier on. So there were, there were points where uh, Richard Taylor was taking seven or eight tenths of a second out of Riley Phillips, but Riley has responded since then. The gap is still coming down, but it's more like two or three tenths of a second per lap now, but it's going to get under a second fairly short. In fact, it is under a second now, down to nine tenths of a second. So by the end of the next lap, I think we'd have these two pretty much nose to tell. In fact, it might even be sooner, the way Richard is driving on this lap. I believe, by the way, uh, we have a drive through I think, for David Denyer. Uh, I'm not going to say that with 100% certainty, but I know we have a, we had a, the comments uh, on who had the drive through penalty. Andrew uh, from Phillips Motorsport asking us that, and I believe that's who it is. Um, that's what we can see in the top left of our picture. Oh, who's that? That's uh, facing the wrong way. I think that might be Mark Home, unfortunately, um, yep. who is... Uh, Oh, who's kind of ghosted out and uh, uh, trying to get going again. So not too sure what happened there, but uh, that's going to be a lap down now. So uh, uh, whether that is him or whether that's actually someone, that might in fact be someone else. So uh, uh, we'll uh, try and figure out who that is. That might be, uh, well, I'm not actually too sure. I'm trying to trying to figure it out, but it, I'll, I'll spend to the end of the race trying to figure it out if I keep going on. <laughs> so uh, uh, here we go. Back with the leaders, shall we? So there we can see Phillips and Towler. We believe it is Denya, though, uh, who has that drive through penalty, but uh, we won't say that with complete certainty uh, just yet. The spinning car has got going just behind this, I think, by the way. So uh, whoever it was who had it off it is back going again. But uh, uh, is Riley Phillips now going to start trying to up his pace a little bit here? I, I know he'll certainly attempt to, but will he start driving a bit better here, Scott? Do you think now he has Towler behind? Will he start going defensive? I think we're going to find that out very shortly. I'll come to you, Scott, in just a second because we are uh, about to uh, have Richard Towler make his first attempt at the lead since the start of the race here. Riley Phillips is indeed going defensive in towards turn number one, getting a little bit out of shape there. Now Riley Phillips is going to have to get back across the circuit to defend the hairpin and does. Towler's going to look to the outside. They're going to be side by side for the race lead with just under 20 minutes to go. Coming out of the hairpin, Towler trying to get the switch back there. Can't quite get the move done. So Phillips has confirmed he's going to try and defend this one all the way and to the flag. So if you've just joined us, we've got 16 minutes minutes to go here are your two race leaders and Phillips who's leading the way at the moment wants to defend this one but round one winner Richard Towler has the inside coming down to the left hander is he going to be able to get the move done just about Phillips trying to hold on around the outside the two drivers who were first and second at round one now sit in that order with Towler ahead of Riley Phillips once again so uh, Phillips now, what's his response going to be when they come onto that back straight? But a good move there. Oh, oh well, well, there we go. Riley Phillips once again diving down the inside. That one caught me out, let alone Richard Towler. <laughs> and Riley Phillips is back through. So side by side now onto the back straight. Phillips once again ahead of Richard Towler. And Richard Towler is now going to go side by side just because that seems to be uh, common practice now uh, on this <laughs> lap. So Richard Towler will now be the one on the outside. Riley Phillips there uh, to our inside. Towler, this is going to be his third or fourth attempt on this lap to try and get this move uh, completely. Late. He's going to be on the outside coming into the left, but should have the inside coming into the right. And Riley Phillips hangs on. I'm going to take a breath, I think, there, Scott. But uh, what a <laughs> battle this is turning out to be. It's fantastic. I didn't wonder what the response was going to be from Riley Phillips. It seems as though his response is, right, if you're going to play rough ball with me to try and get past, I'm, getting, I'm, I'm going to roll my sleeves up and let's have a go. So I can see that Tower's trying to peek through the outside of 
Con corner. The trouble is now for Phillips is that Talon will get another super run down the pit straight to try and get the turn possibly passing back again. But Phillips knows that, uh, for one, that Talon is there, but also he knows that he's going to be more bold to make a move because, remember, the last time he was under any kind of pressure of any kind earlier in this race was when he was being tailed by Pierce Stockton. But back then, Stockton was working together with him to push him down the straights and to pull away. This time, he hasn't got that luxury, if you want to call it that, with Richard Talon. He is on the prowl. He wants the second race win out of two races. He he wants to go for this and he will attack at every single opportunity he's got but Riley showed he was purely he was he was purely relentless to get it back again diving back up the inside of Oggies to get back through it seems to though that now Riley's figured out that his strategy seems to be well I was a bit relaxed in the first two thirds of this race now I've got some real pressure now I have to step on it stop relaxing a little bit and really go for it and that seems to be the case because and not that I expected him to, but Riley Phillips isn't simply just rolling over and letting Richard Towler through. He's fighting as hard as he needs to to stay in front in the lead here and make Towler work for it every single corner of every single remaining lap in these 13 and three quarter minutes. Yeah, Chris, it certainly seems Towler's almost just taken a step back from this now, hasn't he? And maybe he's reevaluating his attack. Just a little bit, yeah. And it may, might be the case that if he's not confident that he can get ahead and pull away. Maybe he's happy to just sit behind and wait for that last lap or two because, in a sense, you don't want to be leading the race if you're only just in front going onto that Bentley straight on the final lap of the race because you're going to give a huge toe to whoever's right behind you. So unless you feel like you can make a real break for it, you know, you won't be too fussed about being, as long as he still has a chance to strike, being right behind Riley Phillips going into those closing stages. But great battle that was, wasn't it? And you don't see many moves at Augie, so you can do it, but it's tight and uh, fantastic dive at the inside to briefly get the lead of the race for Richard Taylor. Good fight back and calm head on the shoulders of Riley Phillips, though, to calmly get back ahead of him. So these two battling away. Meanwhile, Pierce Stockton, who's just in the back of the shot, uh, going through uh, Brandon and Nelson at the end of the Bentley Stray. He's pulled right away now from Jay, Jay Shepard over the last couple of laps. Jay slipped to, well, he was 3.9 seconds back. He's got two within 3.3 seconds. But remember, there were nose to tail three or four laps ago. So Pierce Stockton, for now, looking good for this final place on the podium. But 13 minutes is a very long time in the Fun Cup. Yeah, and just running through the rest of the top 10 there, Chris. It's, uh, we've had some eventful races for some of the rest of them as well, haven't we? Uh, yeah, Chris, I suppose Chris Hart's the one who hasn't had, apart from the first few laps, much of an eventful race. He's, he's sort of on his own in fifth. He's desperately trying to get on terms with Jay Shepard. John Eiley has had an eventful battle uh, with Chris Walton, but uh, John Eiley's come out on top of that. Now he's sixth. Julian Thomas, seventh. Chris Walton slipping to eighth. Ed Worthington's had a bit of a lonely race in ninth. Mark Holm is in tenth place. Stephen uh, Fern, eleventh. Martin Gibson's had a fairly quiet race in twelfth. Ben Trussell going really well, the mechanic in thirteenth place. 14th for Dave Clark, 15th David Denier after that drive-through that penalty we saw. Uh, Chris Rose and Chris Weatherall have swapped places a couple of times, but it's Rose 16th, Weatherall 17th, and Colin Kings North a lap down in 18th place. Yep, that's the full order then uh, for you. Uh, sadly, by the way, J Jamie couldn't be with us uh, this evening. Fortunately, he wasn't able to, to get in, but uh, I know he does send his best. So uh, if he is watching, then uh, I hope he's keeping well. And uh, I'm sure he'll be back with us uh, for another round going forwards. But uh, uh, once again, we can see the leaders just under a second uh, between those two at the moment. This is a good little battle, though. We'll stay with this uh, for a little while. This is... Uh, uh, David Daniel, we can see there in 14th place at the moment. Scrappy behind. Uh, so we'll stay with these two then going down the uh, back straight and see if we see any battling going on uh, between these two. Daniel's had a, an event for one and off uh, earlier in the race. Scrappy uh, has had that of a race uh, at times as well. But uh, coming into the left-hander, uh, not close enough to make a move uh, on this lap. Oh, but there we go, getting a little bit out of shape. David Daniel taking all sorts of curb there <laughs> through the right. <laughs> <laughs> when airborne. I mean, that, that would hurt, wouldn't it, if you were actually in a Fun Cup car, I'm sure. It would hurt the paintwork, that's for sure. Blimey, he did check it over the curves there, didn't he? But yeah, after, after getting out of uh, Scrappy earlier on in the lap, he's, he's got his head down now. He's pulling back away. 14th place. A bit disappointed, though. He's eighth, uh, well in the top 10, David Denier, after he got caught out in that huge melee we had on the first lap. He fought back well to finish in eighth place at Alton, but I don't think he's going to get into the top 10 today. Well, as you can see, the leaders have caught traffic now. We just saw uh, one of the lap cars just uh, having a 
going off to the circuit briefly. I think there might have been Chris Rose uh, behind us, but Richard Towler, we're on board with him now. He's going to have another attempt at taking this race lead from Riley Phillips Towler to the outside. Here we go. This is take number two now at this very corner and is going to try and get the switch back and has found a gap on the inside. So Riley Phillips there has left the door open on the exit of turn number one and now going into the hairpin. Towler is indeed going to be alongside and that is move complete. So Phillips now back into second time that move perfectly there uh, Richard Towler and he now goes into the lead but uh, Riley Phillips is going to come straight back at him and now <coughs> retakes that lead once again so brilliant driving there from Riley Phillips anytime he loses the lead in this race he takes it straight back and that's what you've got to do if you're fighting for a race lead with someone who's got that extra pace on you Towler though here he comes once again down the inside into the left and Towler is once again back ahead so Phillips back into second place I think they're going to keep me going all lap here because they're about to come to the <laughs> Look back. Look at the catchy next, though. Look at the next back marker. Is it scrappy? What could possibly go wrong? Oh, no. Oh, dear. Oh, no. This is going to, this is going to get chaotic, isn't it? Hang on. Hang on to your seat. Oh, no. Scrappy's off. If there are real marshals, they'd be waving blue flags furiously at this point. Oh, he's on the grass. Yeah, I was going to say Scrappy's onto the grass and almost rejoined and took out Froley Phillips. Oh, dear. <laughs> what could possibly go wrong? I think the question nearly got answered there, Chris. But we've got this now. We've got lapped cars in the mix as well and Riley Phillips down the back straight in the slipstream pulls to the right hand side he's now going to be on the outside to try and retake this place from Richard Towler if Richard could hold on here he might be able to just pull a gap but a brilliant move all the way around the outside there from Riley he <laughs> retakes the lead but runs just a little bit wide Richard Towler now into the right hander takes it back again and they're going to be side by side once again there we go uh, Riley Phillips now re retakes the lead once again so oh we've got a back marker coming into the mix as well this could mean they're going to be three wide going yeah. down in towards it's the bed, last corner Bedrosage just went on the grass coming uh, through out of bomb holes so he just rejoined right in front of the leaders <laughs> Oh dear, well it's uh, Riley Phillips who's back in the lead there, Chris. I love that Ben just said I'm not having any part of this and just went literally exit stage <laughs> looked out of the way. It seems to you, you carry on with your battle, I'm not getting involved. It's just it's just uh, we've just taken a, a little bit of a settle there. So uh, Towler once again there, Chris, he's tried everything. There's seven and a half minutes. He's now thinking that's plan A, that's plan B. Uh, is there a plan C to try to try and get this race win? The, the, the problem is that the more he attacks, the more he shows his hand, the more Riley Phillips is, you know, expectant of what's coming. He knows where Richard is stronger. He knows where Richard's a bit quicker, where he might have a go. So he's going to be better prepared to defend those positions in these uh, remaining seven minutes or so of the race. So uh, Richard's going to keep knocking on the door, that's for sure. But, you know, catching, as a very famous commentator once said, is one thing. Getting past is quite another. Yes. And uh, that's proven to be the case here because he caught the leader pretty easily, didn't he? That, uh, that three-second gap. But can he get past? Well, yeah, but not for long because Riley Phillips gets him back every time. I was going to say, Scott, the gap. I, I, you'd expect what we were saying earlier in the race, that someone like Pierce Stockton or Jay Shepard would be right with these guys with this happening. But uh, they're actually keeping a fairly good pace considering they're battling. They are, actually. Are, are, are you are absolutely right? And I think what it is is that it seems as though that Riley Phillips for this... He was a bit of he was a bit dormant in these first two thirds of the race. He's only just sort of... He wasn't really sort of fending off Pierce Stockton. But then again, Pierce wasn't really making that many attacks. Whereas this time, Richard Tower seems to have awoken him in this race and properly caused him to get his elbows out and start to defend these positions. And the crucial thing has been... The question I was going to ask earlier on is how were, they, were, were the both of them going to deal with them switching through the through the traffic. So far, they've coped okay. They've had one or two nervy moments, as we've seen. They're now coming up onto the back of David Denyer, and he's been in the wars once or twice in this race already. But Trano just getting back onto the tail of Phillips here. And this is a race which I think there's only six minutes to go. So, obviously, we can only have one winner. We can't share this. But in any case, is whoever is going to win this race, they're going to have to sort it out in the next six minutes. Otherwise, it's going to be a very interesting and nail-biting run to the flag come the last lap. It is, and here they come onto the start finish straight uh, once more. We are on board with Richard Towler. Let's have a look then at what's going on uh, out of the car. We can just see we've got a back marker ahead of us, so uh, 
There we can see that's David Denyer, isn't it, as we said, who is uh, ahead. Uh, he's now potentially going to play a part in this as well. Towler looks like he's having a look to the inside, but uh, isn't close enough to uh, get alongside and make the move into turn one this time. Uh, but this could get interesting. You can see Riley Phillips there flashing the headlights as they come down to the hairpin, saying to David Denyer, get out of the way, please, because uh, we've got Richard Towler just behind me, and we're fighting for a race lead without now only five minutes remaining uh, in this race. So Towler, he's been with Riley Phillips for a good 10 minutes or so, but uh, with five to go, Chris, Riley Phillips still hanging on, and it looks like actually Towler is going to be delayed by Denya here. Oh, a little bit of contact between the two there almost, and Richard Towler in the end just about getting by. Yeah, what's been uh, great between these two, Phillips and Towler, is how close they've been, but how clean it's been as well. It's been... You know, you could barely get a piece of paper between the two cars at times, but they've been thumping each other around, they've been barging each other off. It's really been in the spirit of Fun Cup, close but fair racing, great sportsmanship all around. You can tell they're enjoying it. You can tell they're on the ragged edge, and it's just fascinating to watch. And, you know, you'd be a brave person if you were to put a bet on either one of these drivers because there's absolutely nothing between them. It's been a two-horse race now, it seems to be. Phillips and Towler, Stockton looks safe in third, Shepherd in fourth looks uh, settled as well, Hart and Eiley fifth and sixth, so it's all about this scrap for the race victory. Here we go then, once again, Richard Towler, you can see the gap just over two tenths behind uh, at the moment, so time is starting to run out, there's only going to be uh, a couple of laps to go potentially at the end of this one, but there's a mistake from Riley Phillips there, and Richard Towler is going to get through almost, so Richard Towler now draws alongside, a rare mistake from Riley Phillips, and that has allowed Richard Towler to take the race lead, three and a half minutes remaining, and Towler has inherited the lead, Riley Phillips trying to come back at him once again, couldn't find the space to do it so uh, Riley Phillips that was him under a lot of pressure but that's the first time he's cracked and now he's the one having to do the work in second place here as they come down the start finish straight once more it couldn't be any closer to Richard Towler pushing him down the start finish straight there with Towler uh, on the inside Towler who's trying to take a win for the second time in, in, in as many rounds here's Riley Phillips then looking to the outside can he get the move done through turn one Towler now the run running a little bit wide there Phillips is going to get the switch back and now he is going to inherit the lead going down towards the hairpin so Riley Phillips back through once again a mistake a piece there in the space of one lap Scott and Riley Phillips is now back into the race lead oh this is breathless stuff between the two of them this is fantastic and Phillips isn't done yet he's going to have to time to defend from Towel who's going to go down the outside into Palmer's and that's a slightly off camber corner on the outside line it's almost cambered on the inside so almost two different sort of converse parts of the road there and now we've got for, um, Tyler on the inside line on the sprint down towards the Agostini hairpin they're side by side again it's been like this for the last five ten minutes it's been brilliant racing as finally Tyler does get back up the inside into the lead I say finally because they can go back and forth but you can bet your bottom dollar that Phillips will be back on him again in the next few corners Chris, I suspect it will be Phillips back up the inside or somewhere at least to get back into the lead but they, you're absolutely right they're running out of time there's only two minutes to go left on the clock which means about this and maybe one more lap so they're going to have to sort it out and sort it out quick. But how do you separate the two of them when they're this evenly matched? Very, very close stuff. Here we come on to the back straights. Close for sixth place as well between John Eiley and uh, Julian Thomas. But uh, we'll just have to look at the results for that one because uh, we cannot leave this battle for the lead. It's been like this now for around 15, 16 minutes as Riley Phillips is the car on the outside. The one on the inside, that is Richard Towler. And Riley Phillips is going to dive all the way around the outside there and takes the race lead. Brilliant stuff, but almost an instant replay of a couple of laps ago. Towler does the exact same thing gets the switch back and now he goes back uh, into the lead all it was rolls reversed it was riley phillips doing that a few laps ago now it's richard towler doing the exact same thing chris so it's going to be richard towler leading what will potentially be the last lap of the race yeah, it will be. It will be the final lap of the race when they cross the line next. They've just got to come out through Murray's and then one more lap, three more miles, two minutes or so left in this uh, thrilling one-hour race, round two of the uh, virtual Fun Cup series. Uh, Stockton has got safely past Denia, so it looks like third place will be his. Uh, Julian Thomas has been closing on John Eiley, so he should, if he can carry the speed, get that sixth place on this final lap. 
But here we are then, through Richie's corner, the top two on the final lap of the race, just seven tenths of a second apart. They've both led, and uh, they've both won uh, races online in this uh, series, in the Open Series. But who is going to come out on top here at the end of the Bentley Strait is surely where it's all going to kick off. You're going to get that toe effect, that slipstream effect. And at the moment, Riley Phillips is the one who's going to benefit from that. But is he going to be able to hold it once he gets ahead, if he gets ahead? On the brakes, because we've seen Richard Taylor and Riley Phillips both coming back on the way out of the corners. You're on board with Julian Thomas down as he goes through to sixth place uh, on the final lap of the race ahead of John Arley. But back to the leaders, it's going to be nip and tuck now. Yep, there you can see Julian Thomas, an attempted move. But let's go back to the leaders uh, once again and check in with them. Because as you as you said, Chris, uh, when they get onto that back straight, is it going to be Towler? Is it going to be Phillips? That's where Phillips is going to have his chance to try and retake this lead. It's been a, a long, a long fight for Towler to uh, get into that race lead. He's been there momentarily several times. Uh, and of course, he has been recovering from an instant at the very start of the race. But this is how they were at the end of round number one. Towler from Phillips. Uh, from Thomas. The podium looks like it's going to be almost exactly the same, albeit with Pierce Stockton in third. Richard Towler is going to benefit from a toe as well uh, going down the straight, so that is going to help his case. That isn't going to be good news for Riley Phillips. I'd say it's down to whether Richard Towler, if he gets held up here by the back marker, or if he makes a mistake and the back marker uh, goes off, so that's so uh, useful for uh, Towler. That might have been on purpose uh, as well, but uh, only a couple of corners now remaining. What a fantastic race it's been between Richard Towler uh, and Riley Phillips as they approach the first corner. A fantastic race here, Chris. There's one corner to go now for Towler, and it looks like it's going to be two in as many races for him. Yeah, Towler kept his uh, head, didn't he, going onto the Bentley straight. He got a great run out of Williams, and that was where the danger was going to be. And no trouble with the traffic. He, he's got out of the last corner. He's headed for the line for the checkered flag. It's been a fantastic battle. But Richard Towler is going to be a race winner here. Round two of the Fun Cup Virtual Series at Snetterton. Second place to Riley Phillips. And a terrific drive from Pierce Stockton. He's going to join them on the podium. Yep, Jay Shepard comes across the line to take fourth place. It's going to be Chris Hart. We can see him there now coming up to the line. He will be in fifth place. And then it's a 44-second gap until we come to this battle for six. And it should be John Eiley uh, who holds on to this to take sixth place uh, ahead of uh, Julian Thomas in seventh Scott. Fantastic race it's been there between uh, our top two and overall. And this, just another battle we're looking at that has, has been a good one. Yeah, amazing stuff between the top two. Really proper back and forth stuff. And I think you'll both agree, this is that's the sort of stuff where on occasion you do see that happen in front cup races. I think, I haven't, truthfully, I haven't seen a battle as intense as going back and forth as that before. I think like, posting properly it will be, I think Chris will agree, I think the the, 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 the finale championship battle about two or three years ago, I think the top three of the championship were battling. Oh, well, sorry, Scott, a change here. I think coming out of the final corner, Julian Thomas, out of the <laughs> final corner, has just snuck past John Eiley. So there we go. What a change right at the end of the race. Uh, sorry to cut across you there, but uh, brilliant stuff at the end. It's uh, Chris Walton. <laughs> no, 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 a fair point. It was a great move on that side. But I think probably um, Mr Hartley would agree. I think the, the closer we've seen a battle like that in a while, I think it's possibly the... Uh, the, the finale we had about two or three years ago at Alton Park when we had the top three of the championship literally dicing back and forth lap after lap, corner after corner until mm. it eventually decided the title in the favour of, I think it was JPR Uvio, but yeah, was, great battle yeah. between the pair between Richard Tal and Riley Phillips. And I'm going to make a bold statement here is that I'm not sure if you two of you agree. I think with the form he's shown so far, in, especially in the fun cut, I'd be very intrigued to see how Richard copes in a real fun cut car because if he can battle that hard, I know there are Differences and similarity between the two, granted, but if he's able to hold his own in a, a virtual fun cut car that's as well put together as one of those, I've been intrigued to see what he can do in a real one of those, at least in a, on a track session, to see how quick he is, because that certainly shows he's got some really good race craft in these cars. I'm sure that Riley will appreciate the race, as I'm sure everyone else will have done. I remember at one point he was sideways on the grass at the exit, exit of Turn 1, about back in 7th or 8th position, to so the come back through to a position where he could have won the race, battled back and forth with Riley Phillips, who'd left for about two-thirds of the way and resisted early pressure from Piers Stockton to then come through to overcome that titanic scrap between the pair of them and to come through with the victory. I mean, that is, that's the mark of a great sim racer and someone who is incredibly talented. So kudos to, to Richard to come back the way he did and to actually not just come back towards the front, but to take the victory in the way that he did. Brilliant drive. Yeah, it was, uh, what was so impressive was how patient he was. He didn't get all ragged once he had that bad first lap and he got you know pushed around a bit he dropped down the order 
he kept cool he took his time and he he knew he got a long long way to go in the race and he, he he never he never went wide he never threw it onto the grass he never you know pulled off any uh banzai moves to, to try and get back through the order it was a really controlled measured drive uh all the way down to the final lap of the race as ever with the fun cup those changes for six but uh, ed worthington as well dropping down the order by two places on the last lap of the race so very very much a typical fun cup race that in it went right down to the wire and we had no idea who was going to win it until the actual flag came out. I'll tell you what, guys. Do you, what, do you fancy going and have a chat with Richard Towler? Uh, he is waiting for mm, us on the voice absolutely. channel. You can see General VC Fabulous. there. If you guys join me in there, we'll go and have a chat with our race winner. Richard. Hello. Is it working? Yes. How, how are you doing? Uh, I believe I believe Chris Chris Hartley's joined me as well. Chris, we're, we're here, of course, with Hello. Richard Towler. Richard, that was awesome. Uh, I mean, was that as much fun uh, uh, to to do as it was to watch? Because that was a pretty intense race after what happened to you on the first lap. No, that, that was a lot of fun. I mean, like those last, I think it was like seven or eight laps or something. A rally were really, really good. Mm. It was both racing really clean? So it was, yeah, yeah. yeah. You was you were side by side, but there was there was uh, if if any contact, it was very little. We yeah. particularly liked the the move. I don't know if you remember it. There were so many moves, but the move that you pulled off to get ahead of him at uh, at Oggies just after you caught him. That that was a real uh, dive down the inside. You had a couple of those, didn't you? Yeah, I mean, it's always worth a try on the bricks. Um, you know, <laughs> so, you know, I'll give it a go. But, but you know, it's just a bit messy from lap one, which I think was completely my fault. So apologies to Jay for causing him contact on that one. Did you think it might be easier to get the lead than it was in the end? Because you actually caught a sort of three, three and a half second gap that you caught up fairly easily, didn't you? Yeah, but I mean, it's hard. Once you make a move, you've got to go in quicker. And um, it's really hard to get a proper run out the corner once you do that. So, so it gives the other guy a chance to get a run back. And that's just, you know, that's just the way it was working. But it made for some good racing. It did, yeah. And there's been a few mods to the cars, hasn't there, since the, the, the first round at Alton Park. And they see, I mean, the, the realism, I don't know, to drive, because I'm not doing it, you are, but the, the way they seem to move around on screen very much looks uh, looks like the real deal. It's fantastic to view. Yeah, I mean, it feels really good, you know. You know, So I'm dying to have a go in the real car now. So uh, well, I think your CV's, looking, your CV's looking pretty good, isn't it? <laughs> yeah. No, well, well, well done, Richard. It was a really, really enjoyable race, that. Yeah, it was really good. So you know, you know, it's been really fun to race. So you know, um, um, kudos to Rally for putting the mod together. Yeah, you know, it is worked really hard behind the scenes on making sure the car's right, and it's done a lot of changes between each race to make sure it is. And, and you're on a hat trick. Really on a hat trick now. Um, that's two, right? The, the first two races, but um, I did get fastest lap today, which I wanted to get from Rally after he beat me. Today. Oh right. <laughs> <laughs> Yes, that that'll be uh, that'll be the, the difference. You'll just extend your, your championship lead that little bit further now with that, that extra couple of points for the fastest lap, and it might come down to one or two points. So yeah, it's worth keeping an eye on that, isn't it? Yeah, it is. I mean, you know, it's points at the end of the day, and you know, I could have a bad day, and you can drop down to tenth in the championship the way it works. So mm. you know, you've got to get every point while you can. Yeah, brilliant. Well, well, well done. You can. Uh, it must be pretty intense today. I know it's perhaps not physically as demanding, anywhere near as demanding as driving a, re a real race car, but the concentration that's required is, is just as much, isn't it? Yeah, I mean, it's you know, it's just all about focus. So you just put everything into just focusing, hitting the same marks and hitting the, the you know kind of similar lap times. You know, because that's when I was really catching rally was I was able to run mid to high fourteen for quite a long time. So yeah, it's pretty hard work, but. You know, I'm, it, you know, I'm sure it's harder in a real car <laughs> to do that. So, you know, and <laughs> because I'm a bit too tubby for the real car, I think. Oh, I don't know. You wouldn't be, you wouldn't be the biggest. <laughs> <laughs> oh, brilliant stuff. Uh, thank you, Richard. Uh, we've got the rest of our top three here as well. So uh, we've got uh, Riley Phillips and, and Pierce Stockton also here as well. So we'll chat to Riley next, shall we? Uh, hello. Yes. Good, good, good race, Richard. Thank you. Um, it's exciting at the end there. Uh, it was indeed. And before we speak to you, Riley, just to, of course, say everyone, uh, obviously, make sure you follow the channel, uh, like, comment, subscribe, do all the rest, uh, because our next race, uh, of course, is going to be around number three, and that is going to be on the 24th of May from uh, Anglesey. But Chris, I'll, I'll leave it with you to, to chat with uh, Riley now, because that a brilliant race, Riley, there in uh, in second. 
Yeah, yeah Riley, you, it worked out for you on the first lap, didn't it? Uh, and you got your head down while everybody else sorted themselves out. But I suppose the first half of the race, it was just about keeping your own concentration up. The second half of the race, you could see this uh, this blue missile getting bigger and bigger in the, mir in the mirrors, couldn't you? It was. It was quite scary watching Richard work his way back up the grid from uh, his incident at the start. Um, and yeah, for the first half, it was just kind of keeping my head down, concentrating and trying to hit all the apexes. And it's it's hard on this car because, you know, the, the track is so open. Any little mistake you do costs you loads of time. So I'm quite quite happy with how I did for the first bit. Uh, and then, yeah, Richard started reeling me in and it was right. Came on. Let's see. See how well I can defend. And Scott, we we thought that actually uh, you, that Riley might not be too disappointed to be in second place, going onto the Bentley straight for the final time, because we half a chance, half a thought, didn't we, that you might benefit from a total. Yeah, it was um, it was quite interesting to watch that, and it was great. It, it, it just on that point in the first half of the race, I mean, it looked as though that Piers was mostly working together with you because he wasn't giving you that much pressure. Was, was it? Did you feel as though as soon as Richard was on the tail, you had to kind of? turn the wick up a bit more and think, right, this is not him working together with me here. This is more, he's after my lead here. Do you have to kind of change that tack a little bit? Yeah, so first first off, I've got to say, Piers, Piers and me worked really well to get a bit of a gap. Um, and then, yeah, I saw Richard starting to work his way very rapidly towards us at about six tenths up. So I had to kind of turn it up and I got it, got it down so he was only gaining about two or three tenths a lap. But yeah, it, it wasn't enough in the end. Uh, so Good stuff. Yeah, good result though. Good. Uh, I mean, you've had three good results now in these races with the open race as well. So, yeah, I mean, I'm can, very, uh, very happy with second. It's it's good. <laughs> that I haven't had any incidents, run out of fuel, do anything which I uh, shouldn't have done. <laughs> yeah, and an enjoyable race, which is the main thing. It was it's great to be involved in battles like that, isn't it? It was it was a great battle. I loved every minute of it. Can't wait to get back in the real car. <laughs> Absolutely, yeah. I think we all feel like that. But this is this is. This is giving us our fix for now, so thanks for that, Riley. It's been been ter terrific to uh, to watch these uh, last couple of rounds. No problem, thank you. Great stuff. Well done. So we're from our top top two, Chris. Uh, we've we've got the full house, and we can yeah. Pierce, uh, final man on the podium. Hello. Well done, well done, Pierce. Excellent. That, that's more like it. We we could see you were quick at Alton Park. You never got the chance to show what you could do, but you had uh, well, firstly you had a good battle with Riley, and then that battle with Jay for a good few laps was really entertaining. Yeah, so I just thought that I'd, um, I'd try and pull a bit of a gap with Riley um, and then try and keep Jay behind, uh, which was quite difficult. Um, but yeah, it worked out well. It was nice just to not jump the start, if I'm being honest. <laughs> what um, what happened in the last few laps? We, we were following the battle for the lead, but there were, we saw the last time that Jay got close to you and he had a go at you. But after that, you just seemed to pull up, pull away, and you, you, I think you were three or four seconds clear of him in the end. Yeah, I just managed to pull a little bit of a gap, and I think that the, the traffic towards the end helped me out quite a bit. I was uh, flashing the lights frantically. <laughs> and what did you see of the, uh, the the drama at the first corner? Because you sort of got, worked your way through it quite nicely, didn't you? It was like the seas parting. <laughs> <laughs> and the road opened up in front of me. Yes, and you, there's a great big grin on your face at that point, no doubt. Yeah, it was a beautiful, uh, much, yeah, beautiful much. start, wasn't it? <laughs> so you, you're somebody else. We've got to we've got to get in a in a Funko car once the season gets going. You've you've uh, done a really good job there. Some big names behind you in that race. Yeah, no, they're, they're, you know they're, they're all they're all quick guys. So yeah, it's 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 nice. Fantastic. And um, how how is the car to drive around Snetterton compared to Alton Park? I mean, there's been a few mods. Is it is it? Can you notice yeah, it's, the difference? It's really nice. Um, for me, just Snetterton's a, a tough track. Mm. Really, really tricky. Um, exit to out of corners is key, and it's difficult to get a good exit. Yeah, that first sector, I suppose, as well, where the corners flow into one another. It's very, if it's very easy to lose your your rhythm, I imagine, through there. Oh, very easy. I made a couple of mistakes and and, and lost Riley a little bit. Um, but it's so easy to just make a few mistakes. And, and uh, an hour of concentration is hard work, isn't it? Yeah, I'm due a drink now. <laughs> well, not alcoholic, of course. <laughs> no. <laughs> you don't need to say anything whiskey, yeah, fair enough. No, well, well driven, Pierce, that was excellent. And uh, and uh, we'll see what you can do about these two at the next round, see if you can uh, get a bit higher at the podium.
yeah, we'll see what we can do. But I think they were they were a little bit quicker than me. <laughs> oh, well done. Great, great drive anyway. Well done, Pierce. Thanks. Good stuff. I, I believe we've got is Scrappy in here with us as well. No, no. Uh, maybe I, 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 I thought he was. Uh, should, should we? Do you want to go to hop into a different chat room, guys? We've got Chris Hart. I, I can see he's down there in one as well as uh, Steve with Steve Walton. Do you want? Should we go join those guys? Yeah, let's let's go go for it. It. thank you to everyone in this chat. Thank you for for racing, and we look forward to seeing you at Anglesey. Thank you very much. Well done, guys. Well done. That's our top three. Let's go and hear from a couple more drivers. So uh, I'll uh, I'll jump into there now. Hello. Can anyone hear me? You're live on air. No. Oh, oh it's just us three again, guys. I think. <laughs> I don't think anyone's here. <laughs> <laughs> the icons thing? are there there's nobody home yeah we're, we're knocking on the door but no one's answering uh well in uh, that case there's, guys, uh, there's beer to be drunk yeah yeah um and, and as for your, as for yourselves well, i think i think that's us done isn't it for for this round but uh final thoughts from you guys it was uh it was a fantastic race wasn't it yeah really enjoyed it really really enjoyed it and uh i think the first round at alton park was, was uh pretty mega but that was even better i reckon terrific stuff I, I loved watching these. I love watching the racing. Uh, it's sort of bittersweet, though, isn't it? Because it really makes you want to go to a real racetrack when you see one of these and, and, and get that fixed again. But for now, while well, we're all in lockdown, it's, uh, it's been a, a great thing to be involved with. And uh, yeah, well done to all. It's thoroughly entertaining. Oh, Chris Hart's there. Hello, Chris. Can you hear us? No? Hey, he, he, he was lighting up there for a second. Uh, and from yourself, Scott, um, yeah, thanks for, thanks for joining us, first of all. Uh, how did you enjoy it? Yeah, I, I appreciate you having me. Um, yeah, brilliant race on that occasion too to see the, the the scrap between both Riley and Richard. I think really was the battle of the race in many cases, back and forth for several laps in the last third of the race. Uh, brilliant action they provided all the way through, and I think it really does give a nice advert, not just for the virtual series but also for the real one, because I think we can all get all uh, attest to the fact that th th you get action like that pretty regularly from start to finish in <coughs> F1 Cup races when it's oh, no it's tail really and. Bad. Fast battling amongst each other, so it is pretty intense. I think we've got Chris Hart has finally woken up. I think. Yeah. Oh, Hello? Chris, how are you doing? You, you are there. Just, I just found out how to work it. Oh, oh <laughs> you're just speaking to the microphone usually. <laughs> he can he can work a he can work a bunk up car, but he can't work a headset. No, that's true. <laughs> how did you find that one? Oh, I just need to work this setup out. Um, yeah, it's good fun though. Yeah, really good. Yeah, couldn't catch uh, couldn't catch the guys all this time. It was a bit of a lonely race that. Yeah, less eventful, but uh, not at the start though. It was a uh, good fun at the good scrap at the start, wasn't it? Yeah, we tried our best. <laughs> <laughs> There's a bit of wheel hanging going on, but that's just normal, isn't it? What was wrong with the set then? Because you uh, you were all over the shop in qualifying. Ah, I don't know. I just I just maybe need to go on and practice maybe more than ten minutes before. <laughs> Well, it works in the real world. <laughs> I know. <laughs> I think what it is, you're not, you're not going to you're not going to the pub for long enough before the race. No, that's it. We need them back open again. <laughs> <laughs> I must, I must admit, Chris, it, it it did look like you were auditioning for darts on ice in qualifying. You did take a couple of spins, especially yeah. Hairpin, I think. Yeah, no, it's um, it's just that because the cars don't I don't find the the setup changes react like they do with the real car. So I'm just trying to get our head around uh, how to set it up. So. We'll have to do a bit more practicing next time. Is it, is one, it one useful... Quick... Go on, sorry. That's, is it useful for you to do this, though, where you, where you can't drive a real race car? Is this been a useful way to... I mean, I know you, you do a lot of sim work anyway, but does it keep you sharp? Yeah, of course it does, yeah. It's just good to get on with everybody as well. Just uh, fantastic uh, how they've put it all together. I think it's great. The, the, the one thing I was going to quickly ask is that we were talking about before in terms of the transition for drivers who go from sim to a real car and real to sim. I mean, for those who maybe don't know kind of what are the immediate differences, I mean, I, I imagine the big one's the sensation, but just what are the main sort of differences and similarities that you find going from the real fun cup car to the sim one and back and forth, just for those who want a bit of a better understanding for someone who's now driven both? Yeah, I mean, I, I would say it's... Um eight parts of the way there and you just don't really have completely the real feel um i don't think there's any substitute for that so but but it's it's very very close really good good stuff fab thanks so, yeah well, 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 well done get uh, get you in the mix a bit more next time hopefully because open park you certainly uh were one of the stars of the show yeah well, we'll see what we do we'll see what we do <laughs> nice to, to it. 
Nice to talk to you, Chris. Take it easy. Cheers, guys. Thanks Bye. very much, Chris. Uh, guys, Bye. join me back up in the commentary booth and we'll, we'll end there. Well, I'm just waiting for the, the guys to join me, but uh, while they are, while they are, um, just want to say thanks to everyone for tuning in. Don't forget, we've got an open race next week, and then round three is on the 24th of May at Anglesey. Guys, thanks, thanks again for uh, for 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 being with us. Uh, fantastic uh, to to have you both along. Uh, guys in the comments still with us don't forget to like follow and subscribe because uh, as we said round number three will be on the 24th of may at anglesey guys that's uh that's going to be a good one isn't it yeah anglesey is always uh a good track in terms of the the racing so uh i'll be another really close one i think we'd be fantastic and uh very much looking forward to it in a couple of weeks time so yeah good good to work with uh, you and scott as well take care both yeah, thank you very much. And uh, Scott, have you have you had many trips to Anglesey? I mean, thankfully we don't ha actually have to do the trip there. But uh, you've you done much, uh, you done much <laughs> no, work no, in Anglesey. I, I, I have been there a few times, and I always say the same thing to people: is that it's an absolute pain to get to, but once you're there, it is one of the most beautiful and picturesque. I think it's not the most beautiful and picturesque circuit that we have in the UK. Right on the Welsh coast, you look out across the Irish Sea; it's a fantastic place, and it holds some great racing. And it has a variety of different weathers, from bright blue sunshine. I've seen it to walls of rain that have made it look as though it's a grey wall of water out to see a, a couple of 24 hour races have been there before but it's a great circuit it's a great place to drive it's got some great layouts and yeah it's just a fantastic place to race i know that the fun cup guys in real life love going there and they like having the uh, the usual sort of into the night race that they normally have these sort of either longer race that goes from the day into the evening or the two different separate races they have uh, it's always got a special occasion it's one of the almost centerpiece events they have in the calendar so to see the racing at Anglesey in the sim should be pretty special and I imagine hopefully we'll get just about the same amount of uh, top racing that we got tonight so fingers crossed and yeah likewise to Chris great to work with you with you guys in a, a different session than I guess we probably normally would but uh, it's at least for me it's uh, it's a more sort of um old school way of doing things haven't been done the sim stuff but uh, it's good to see most what going into that sort of sim thing whilst this whole situation is going on but uh, yeah onwards to anglesey and let's see what it brings next time it's not a bad substitute for the time being is is it uh, guys take care of yourselves uh, those of you watching as well thank you very much for tuning in this has been round two of the virtual fun cup uk series round three will be on the 24th of may from anglesey that's all for now remember to stay safe stay home and we'll see you for round three